no luck. Hi, I'm Michelle. You would either need to be psychic or have superpowers to be able to bend a spoon like this. But the Takumi innovator I'll be introducing you today has created a bendable metal tableware. Well, let's go find out what they're like. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, thank you for coming. Today's Takumi is Katsuji Nosaku, the fourth generation owner of a 100 year old foundry. We were immediately taken to see the products. Can you guess what this is? Mm, it looks like a trivet. What is it? Well, you see, this is how you use it. Like this. Like this. And like this. <laughs> that's amazing! It quickly morphed into a basket. And that's not all. Returning it to its original form is just as easy. You can reshape it as many times as you like. In addition to this basket, the company offers a variety of transformable metal tableware. The secret of this bendable material is that it's made 100% out of tin. Tin is a soft metal that melts at a low temperature of 231.9 degrees Celsius. It's used to coat the inside of cans. At the time, there wasn't anyone who used 100% tin for casting. The reason was that people expected metal to be hard. Our concept was, if it's soft enough to bend, then make that its greatest feature. But its softness presented the greatest difficulty during development. Ordinarily, castings are made by pouring melted metal into hardened sand molds. After the metal cools, the mold is broken and the product is taken out. Then the excess metal that leaked out of the edges of the mold is shaved off. However, because the casting is 100% tin, it's too soft and warps during the shaving process. So the Takumi came up with the idea of making a silicone mold. The idea was to create such precise molds that the metal would have no way of seeping out. This is the casting made with a silicone mold. There's almost no excess metal and the surface shines like it's been polished. But it didn't work out this well in the beginning. Here is one of their failed pieces. The main cause of its failure was air. Melted tin pushes out air as it fills the mold. But a silicone mold does not have ventilation characteristic, so the air is trapped and keeps the tin from filling the mold properly. For days, they created oddly shaped castings in search of a solution. But Nosaku had no intentions of giving up. I've always hated the word impossible. You have to keep pushing forward until you're successful. The answer that they hit upon is said to be in the mold. We were shown the inside of the mold, however, I don't see what you altered in this mold. We applied something special to the surface. What is it? Uh, it's a trade secret. Oh, really? I'm afraid so. Although the substance is a trade secret, we will let you in on how it works. The substance is applied to the inside of the mold and reduces friction. It enhances the tin's flowability and allows it to reach every corner of the mold. And at the same time, it pushes the air upwards. These here are the air vents. There are a lot of minuscule holes on the upper surface. Five years after initial development began, the bendable 100% tin tableware was complete. 
the Takumi's company is located in Takaoka City, Toyama Prefecture. The area has been a part of the casting industry for over 400 years. Many foundries work as subcontractors for major companies and create Buddhist altar equipment, vases, and Japanese tea utensils. Although the Takumi inherited a subcontracting company, he believed that making and selling original products himself is what true manufacturing is about. The Takumi now has his sights set on a new area, medical equipment. This is a splint prototype for keeping a broken finger in place. And of course, it's made out of pure tin. Tin has high antibacterial properties. The Takumi believes that if doctors had medical equipment that they could process on site as needed, then it would help save more people. He is currently collaborating on development with a local doctor. The Takumi is constantly taking on new challenges. We asked him what he considers important. I think enjoying your work is the most important thing. If you do, then anything is possible. Say you're in love with a woman, you'd do anything for her. That's the same in business. If you love what you do, then you're willing to pursue it. It's that kind of attitude that's important.